All right, guys, so now that we're finished with the functional groups, we can kind of go through and begin to talk about the history of infrared spectroscopy. You know, where did it come from? How did it start? Uh, and what goes on in IR as far as pieces and parts go? So the first thing that you have to keep in mind is that infrared spectroscopy really begins during the age of Isaac Newton. Newton uh, did many of a number of things. And very often, he doesn't really get credit for the field of spectroscopy. But, you know, he, this was one of the things that he was fascinated with. It was one of the things that he did lead to the discoveries of. And because of Newton's findings, we start to see other people that are interested in his work. And then they take his idea and they embellish it. They go the next step. And without Newton laying the foundation, then this wouldn't have happened as it did, as quick as it did. So I'm going to give credit where credit's due, and that is to Newton. However, the main player in infrared spectroscopy is with a man with the last name of Herschel. And Herschel looks at the work that Newton is doing. And he gets inspired, and he goes into his own room, his own lab space, and he begins to play around with light. And we know now that we have an electromagnetic spectrum, and we now know there is UV there, and we know that there's visible there, and now because of the lecture, we know that IR is present as well. Well, back in the day, they didn't really know this. So how did they come up with this idea that infrared radiation exists and that it's present, but it's something that I can't see? How did they discover something like this? It's kind of strange, and you scratch your head, and you wonder what goes on. All right, so what Herschel did, first and foremost, I need to tell you that Herschel is also given credit to something else, and that's Uranus. No, I didn't say Uranus. I said Uranus, the planet Uranus. He's given credit to Uranus. So in 1781, he discovers this planet. So he was an astrologer, but he was also a mathematician, and he was also a musician, and he was also interested in the chemistries at the same time, in physics. So these things kind of go hand in hand. Uh, he regarded himself as a normal person. Uh, the problem, though, is that normal people do not build their own telescopes in their backyard, and that's exactly what Herschel did. And here is a drawing or a diagram of what Herschel's telescope looked like. Now, could you imagine Herschel says that he is a common man that just likes to be a musician and likes to do science on the side? And then you see this go up in his backyard? That's kind of strange. I don't think he was just a normal common man because of that. All right? So he was given credit to the discovery of Uranus in 1781. And what he did, other than discovery of a planet... <laughs> In his spare time, he began to look at a prism. And the prism, as we know it today, is a piece of glass, in a way, that can separate the colors of the visible spectrum into its individual components. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And those we can see. So he played around with a little bit of prism. And what he discovered is that there is one piece that gives a little bit of heat. And this extra piece is present even though there's no color associated with it. And this is what led him down the path of calling it infrared spectroscopy. It is a additional color, quote unquote, that we can't see, but that is present. All right. So one of the first things that I need to kind of get you to understand is that in the field of infrared spectroscopy, IR, we talk about infrared radiation. Okay, so with infrared radiation, you need to know that all objects 
give off infrared radiation. I know it sounds kind of funny. Uh, however, why don't you take, whoops, sorry, that screen went a little crazy again. So why don't you take your hand and both of your hands actually and take your palms and bring them really close together but don't touch your palms together and just hold them there you know only let enough space that you can actually see through but your palms need to be really really close if you're careful you will notice there's some heat that's getting generated between your two palms if you don't believe me try it so two palms close together just so you can just barely see through them but don't have them to actually touch and each one of your hands will actually feel the warmth that the other hand is giving off and this energy is infrared energy and sometimes we call that heat and that heat is associated with the temperature change all right so you're giving off some radiation everything gives off radiation but you didn't know that but you do now so Herschel begins to kind of play around with this idea and he says okay well this temperature change or this radiation is given off and you know if it's there that energy is there and if the energy is there maybe I can't see it maybe I can but we should at least identify it and label it and prove that it exists all right so I've got a couple of videos here and this first one is Mr. Herschel and his discovery of how IR came into existence. All right, so over here, we're going to push play. And then I'm going to kind of explain to you what's going on as the video goes forward because there's actually no sound. It's kind of depressing, right? All right, so here in the first part of the video, what Herschel decides to do is shine normal light into a chamber. All right, and this could be sunlight. It could be light from a light bulb. It doesn't really matter. But some form of light goes onto the prism. And we know that the prism is then going to take the light and it's going to divide it up into the colors of the rainbow. This is why we see those colors. Raindrops act like little bitty prisms on a sunny, rainy day. And that's why we see a rainbow. All right, so these colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet are present, and these are the colors that we can see. So this was maybe nothing new during the time. This was something that we knew. However, there is an area that's below red, and we now know that's called infrared. And that area was not detected because you can't really see it. It's invisible to the human eyes, but it's present and how can we prove that it's present? Well, Herschel's going to divide an experiment that kind of tells you how he detected the infrared light. All right. So what he begins to do is he begins to kind of isolate that area of the light. <clears throat> and that's what you're seeing here. This piece of cardboard or um, uh, shield, in a way, is only going to allow the infrared light energy to come through and it will block the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet from coming through. And Herschel decides to say, all right, if something is here present, then that's energy. And if energy can give off heat and a temperature change, then why not put a thermometer here? And that's exactly what he does. So what he sees is that this thermometer begins to heat up and the temperature begins to increase and he knows now that this temperature cannot increase unless something's there to make the energy with and this stuff we can't see 
but we know that it's present, and the thermometer is kind of giving me a clue that this is going on. All right? So that's the very first one that I wanted you to watch. Now, here's the second one that's going to follow up on what Herschel actually did to kind of say, listen, not only is it existing, but things can actually interact with it. So here is the same light beam that's been divided up into the spectrum, and it shines through the shield. And this temperature begins to increase. So we see that it's maybe present due to the temperature change. So now Herschel takes a sample, and he says, I wonder what would happen if I put something in that beam of light. So that's what you're going to see in the video. The sample goes in, and then when that happens, if you take a look at the thermometer bulb, the sample begins to absorb the infrared light energy. And because the sample is absorbing it, that thermometer is not getting hit by the infrared energy. And that thermometer's temperature goes down because of that. So now Herschel comes up with this idea that, you know, hey, we found the presence of this energy source because my temperature raises when I put a thermometer in that region. And now we know that if I put something in the presence of that pathway, then that molecule or that substance can absorb the infrared energy and my temperature actually goes down. So not only is infrared present, but things can absorb infrared energy as well. And we now know that because we've spent many of different videos talking about molecules and functional groups absorbing infrared radiation. So that's what you're going to see in the video. They're going to move around the prism a little bit, show you that that effect basically uh, will allow the temperature to go up and to come down and to go up and to come down, and the sample interacts with the light beam and so forth. So that is the discovery of infrared and how all of this came about very, very early on. You know, if you look at when he discovered Uranus, we're talking about 1781. So Uranus is very old, by the way. And then if you go on and you look at the next 100 or so years, 120 years worth, there's hardly anything done in the infrared region. You know, this is pretty stable. It's It quickly becomes an theory almost that this is present, this is what goes on. It's very simplistic in nature, and there's very little change that's associated with it. All the way up until 1937. And then in 1937, what you will find out is that infrared finally is automated. And one of the reasons is because we start to get the technology that we need in order to automate the process. So this is kind of the first time that I would say the infrared spectrometer comes into play, and that's in 1937. Uh, however, in saying that, that doesn't mean that it becomes common. That just simply means that the infrared was actually used for the first time. In the laboratory environment, we see infrared technology really start to take off in the 1960s. So 1960 and on is when the first labs start to get their first spectrometers that can measure infrared light and infrared energy, and we start measuring different molecules and how those molecules behave in the light beams. So in regards, this is fairly new technology in a way. But since 1937 and 1960, nothing's really changed again, except maybe for the instrument itself. Maybe it's gotten a little bit easier to use. Uh, maybe the software systems now make it easier to use. Maybe the pieces and parts are a little bit better. Maybe the instrument is a little bit smaller. But 1937 is the first IR, and 1960 is going to be the first time that it shows up in a laboratory environment, okay? So that's a little bit of history about the infrared. Uh, we're not going to go through instrumentation manufacturers. We're not going to go through who did it first or any of that. 
but it gives you a little bit of background about how IR became into existence. And now we know that the instrument is quite new compared to when the theory was discovered. So instrumentation takes a little while to catch up with everything else. Okay, so over here to the side, that is Mr. Herschel right there. And you can see his little rainbow of colors coming down across from his elbow. And he's posing with a nice little smile. And he's very happy. And he's sitting at his table. And he's probably thinking, huh, look at what I just did. Take that. And then here in the background, you see the telescope that's probably in his backyard. So every common man has a telescope in their backyard. Herschel proves it.